Start on the line, uh, the bottom one of the page. The line begins with Tainu the Chokhmah and the Emes and Inyan. Is Yom Kippur going to help us learn better? Huh? Is Yom Kippur will help us learn better? Absolutely. I'm learning. I'm learning is helping me keep it. <laughs> okay, Tainu the Chokhmah and the Emes and Inyan are bad. The last thing that we that we pointed out over here is in precisely in these words, which occurs often. It says Be'emes. It says the time of a chokhmah Be'emes Heimin and Echabet. In truth, they are essentially one in you. And we pointed out, anyone remembers? That at the level of MS, that is they equally, fully, they equally derive themselves from the, from the truth. What is the truth? It's a place where there's no, there's no darkness, it's, it's like through and through, truth, through and through. There's one truth. There's only one thing that's true. There's one truth. It says Be'emes means in terms of the, of the truth, they're one thing. Now, okay, in other words, from the perspective of the Emes, of the Echad Emes, they are one thing. So how does that affect them? Everything comes from one truth. Everything comes from, from this, from one source. And you say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekein Hashem Echod. Echod means that this may achat everything. Everything comes from one truth. So, the, the answer is, that everything comes from one truth. But after it comes, it has its own orientation. Again, like for example, a table stands on four legs. How does it stand on four legs? Because it stands. It's made to stand. It balances against the ground. The ground and so forth, if I Ultimately, it goes back to, to one truth. The reason that everything stands and everything is drawn to the same nakuda is because it all goes back to the same to one nakuda. But in its own orientation, it's holding on on its own. A tree stands, uh, even in the in the storm. Why? Because it, its roots are holding it to the ground. It's holding on for dear life. It doesn't sense that there is that there is the echo that's holding it. It's not dependent on the echo. It's depending on its own koiches. All that ultimately is connected. Oineg and chokma are different. The whole principle of chokma 
that yes, this is a true concept, and I see the truth is due to its connection to this Eris. This is why we always we emphasize many times over in these lines <laughs> that what is the essential principle of Chochmah? Can anyone help me? The essential principle of Chochmah is that there is a truth. Oineg is actually experiencing the truth, and Chochmah recognizes that there is a truth. And therefore, <coughs> Oyneng and Chochmah, Be'emes, in its essence, what, what's holding them up, what's holding Chochmah, what makes the, 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 the Boraga Maverick real, it is the, the, the Emes behind it. And what allows for Oinig, the Emes behind it. It's a direct connect to the Emes. So it seems to me a little bit strange, though, that it says the Emes, like, if it wasn't the Emes, in other words, you would think that they're different. But the Emes, when you look inside and you really go to the core, then they're the same. And that you can say about everything. Because no, the Emes, no, no. no, no. No, that's what I say. If one of the biggest, most profound errors, most profound uh, disservices that Chochmah to Chen is there. Yeah, what? Chochmah to Chen is that science is that. It, it allows for things to exist in their own. Not only that, but they doubt that there is such thing as a, as a truth. There is no truth. There is not a truth. Everything you, you do as you please at the moment. This is contrary completely to, to the Nefesh HaOlam. And this is the most destructive place of the universe. The statement that there is no such thing as a truth. You act according to your to your whim, according to your social sense of choice. I realized recently, I don't know if I should say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. A, a really traumatic type of a concept. We know that, uh, unfortunately, I've been exposed to a situation like this, where somebody who doesn't know who his parents are. Not knowing one's parents, no matter good or bad, not knowing who his parents puts one in a very precarious situation in her existence and in the world. Because how does a person get to the world? Hmm. Through parents. If he doesn't know his parents, then he's not sure that he's here. I mean, he's sure, he finds out that he's here because he feels himself. But there is not a basis, a source for his being here. This is prevalent in today's society, unfortunately. And think about this. A person who does not have that base in the world, what does the world mean to him? Nothing. This is why to him he can commit the, the most heinous crime without being bothered by it. He doesn't respect that. It's not reality. So what? A person who, who is rooted in the world has a, no matter what kind of hero he has, has a certain stake. This is this is his this is idea. And he has a certain respect for the world. And 
then if he loses that that nekuda, then he has no respect. There's, it's, the world is not real to him. It's not his world. This is the Choch Moshe ben Nefesh. The Chochma tells a person that there is a truth. And this is what Chochma perceives, that there is a truth. And once there is a truth, then everything, everything comes forth on that basis. And this is why he says, Chochmo Be'emes, on the basis of their, their, their truth, they did in an effort. What gives Chochmo its strength, its, its, its power, and what gives Oinek its presence? The same thing, the Emes. Okay, let's continue on this line. Vahataino go atzmishe benefesh. And this essential taino go atzmishe Again, the etzen, the emphasis, ataino go atzmi. Atzmi means that there is a taino without any, any um, solicitation, without any combination, without any arousal. Be'etzim, he has oinik. How come he has oinik be'etzim? Because he senses the amos. <coughs> like a statement, you know, life is good. What's so good about life? Life is good because life connects is, is one thing with the amos. Nothing else. Not the experience of life. That comes after. Because there's reality to life, therefore you want to develop and, and bring out all the koichas and so on. But there is the, the, the MS, which is the MS, that's what we always explain. Called over Moi. Remember, I explained Moi. He wants to be what he is. What's so great about him? The others who are bigger and better than him. Mm. But it, because through being what he is, he's connected to the Amos. This is how you recognize the Amos through this, through this conduit, through this path. I mean, looking at it that way, that's that's the appropriate use of the Amos. Yeah. As opposed to like what his kaifas are, or what he's not. In other words. Here, Be'emes. When you say the word Be'emes, means always this. Now, where is the Alekia? As opposed versus? Um, as opposed to exper experiential. Something. Experientially, Chachma and Tanya are different. Experiential help time. You go to work. As we explained one time, you have to get out, get out of your bed, and get dressed, and you have to go and walk, you go to the subway and travel. And then you go to work, and we always say, oh, he's working because he wants to get the paid, he wants to pay rent for his, for his family, and so forth. The MS! The Amos, the, the inspiration for the, or every one of these activities is one. <coughs> if he had to go out of this truth in order to bring money and to bring to supply, he wouldn't be able to do it. But the person ventures out of his home, as he if he perceived that he is reaching out into nothingness, he wouldn't be able to do it. No, it's the same, the same emits here and there. Mm. 
the gilui in, in terms of worldly terms here is different levels. This is for this, and this is for this, and this is for this. But the emes, it's all one thing. The emes is the source of all the activities and all the chokhmah, all the koiches is chokhmah, as we're going to see now. The essential tainag in nefesh, which means the einag that is there in the nefesh without any external effect, external arousal. Not a circumstantial situation, but a constant true tainag. Zehu atzmus nefesh This is etzma nefesh This Zeho Atmos Anefesh is bringing back the point that we made several times. Um, eventually, we'll, we'll recognize the, the, the significance of this. We said that Iraq in our world is called an Etz. Explain, even though the Al Rebbe says that this is, this is reminiscent and so it's, it's symbolic and so forth, but it's the furthest thing from Etz. Because a true Etzim has Oinig of being what he is. He wants to be what he is. The rock has absolutely no idea what he is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the right. is an instant or not? Sorry. This, right. this is a question from Baruch. Okay, Baruch, you're on speaker. So I come in. Let me just ask you if you can clarify this. You're saying that, I, I mean, this was a little while back, but I couldn't get through to ask you. Heineck has the experience of the truth, and Hoffman knows that there is a truth. Um, normally, you say, like with the Rambam, that this knowledge that there is a truth without anything else, just that there is a truth, this is like pre Hoffman. This is the foundation of Chachma, to know that there's a more degree Chachma actually s sees something of the truth, no? Or I'm missing something. The Yisoyed HaChochmois, the Ramam says. This means the Chochmois is the The, the development of Chochmas. Rama says that later she has shown, to know that there is a first being is the Yisrael of all Chochmas. The Koya HaChochma, pure Koya HaChochma, the pure Koya HaChochma, this is that, that Nekud of Like it says in time, knowing that there is a truth. Now the word knowing, when it applies to Chochma, is not the same as what the Ramam says, lay the Shehoshu Motzedish. The lay the Shehoshu Motzedish means a constant knowledge, a, con a conscious knowledge, where one delves in and, and focuses in on what, what his truth is, and then he gets to, he decides and he knows that there is a, there is a one. That's a very conscious knowledge. Chochmo is not a conscious knowledge. That's my Chochmo, this is, this is, we could say, inadvertent knowledge. This is how the human being knows things before he begins to think. And then, if he should be true to himself, that will be the basis for all his other thoughts. <coughs> and and this, this basic thing that you're talking about, this is, like you said before, uh, seeing or knowing that there is a truth, period. Right. Not knowing anything about it. That's absolutely right. That is, this is Mitzad the Oinek, Refesh, he has, since he has Oinek, he knows that there is a truth. But this is not conscious knowledge. This is not that he figures and proves that there is a truth. This is the, the Gilui of that, of that, of, of the truth of the Oinek. Okay, so, so now and I'll hang on. Okay. 
Yeah. You said the rock is an SM, and then you said it doesn't know what it is. So the what? Then you said that the rock doesn't know. That's why I say the rock is not an SM. Ah, it's not. No, <laughs> many many times. It's it's an allusion to the SM because uh, big oil. The only atom can create such a thing that knows nothing except itself. But it, it does not have that atom in, it, in itself because it, it, it's not for real. That's what you say over here. That the nefesh a tiny who atmos of a nefesh. Zeh who atmos on nefesh. Try to go out and say, this is Yetzim HaNefesh, but Yetzim HaNefesh, but by, by definition, has time to go out. In other words, if Nefesh doesn't care to be what it is, then, it, then it's not a Nefesh. And this, we bring up the rock to make a contrast? What? The rock. We bring it up to just make a contrast? Why, why mm -hmm. do we reference it mm -hmm. at, at all? Only for that purpose. Mm -hmm. To point out what we're always pointing out. I said, the rock is the furthest thing from Earth. It has no essential reality at all. The nefesh is essential reality, and this and, and that's what time ago asked me. Why is it that nefesh has oinek? Because nefesh is nefesh. Now let's continue. Uh, right. <coughs> we, are, we are still far from finishing with these two lines up here. Zehu Atmos on Nefesh. Okay, let's continue on over here. Shekoile Venoise Biatsme. That includes and incorporates. Noi and Noise Biatsme, and we have to discuss the word Noise and bears in itself. Call ha Koiches, all the Koiches. And from it are drawn, come all the Koches. All the Koches come mimenu from the Etzim HaNefesh. And I'd like to, once and for all, to, um, to, to discuss and to understand this in you. This in the We'll start from bottom up, and then we come to explaining the the coil and noise of the atom. Now, we explained many times, we pointed out many times. Um, the human being has, as we're observing, he has several functioning organs that are. That are functional like the hands and the feet and then the eyes and the ears and the mouth and so forth. Each one of these has a very important function. To the extent um, um, sorry, and each function can be identified independent individually to the extent that these are kind of functions that in our days can be duplicated, replicated in a in a in a dummy, in a in a uh, in a, in a, in a uh, robot. Robot can be made to walk hard like a human being, and can be made to talk mm -hmm. even, and even mm -hmm. maneuver with his with his hands. <coughs> there are robots. They found out that robots on the assembly line on cars, they put up robots to do certain, to put in certain screws. And the robot does it better than the human being. <laughs> you, you put it in, boom. <laughs> now, we all understand, if you give it a little thought, even without a little thought, intuitively, that is, there's a big difference between the robot's action and the human action. When the human being moves his hand, 
his entire person is involved in moving this hill. The hand is not moving independently. Even if you prick the hand, and the hand moves, the entire person is aware of this movement. He's involved in this movement. Can not a person does something. Who's looked it? Can be that a person does a few things at a time. It could be, but, but it's, it's it's still his entire. This is this is uh, found in the Gota the 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 Gera Rebbe. Feel the Gera was able to write two thoughts with two hands at the same time. <laughs> this is a, a genius, but it but it's still united. It still comes from, from the same source. What? Okay. So therefore, when we come look at the human being, we don't say, say oh, you got two hands. Oh, he has two hands. Oh, he has two feet. He even has two hands. He even has two feet. No, we don't say that. We say, this is a human being. And God forbid if somebody is missing anyone. Even if he's missing, like we say all the time, a koye, who has a who has some blemish in his little toe, is a balmum. Why is it balmum? It, 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 Functionally, it doesn't interfere anything. He's a bowel movement. He can't do carbonus on the Mizbeach. He's not allowed to enter there. Why? Because he's not a complete human being. In other words, these various limbs that he has are not there functionally. They are there because this is a human being. Let's proceed along these lines. This, I think, we all recognize. Correct? Mm-hmm. Let's proceed along these lines, just as we proceed. Why is this a human being? The fact is, one is not possible for a person to survive without many of his limbs. We can survive, and sometimes. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there are there are situations like that. After World War II, you're not familiar with this with IULs. We saw people walking on crutches with with one foot all the time. It was a common sight in Moscow. So a person can survive. The life element in the person can be without a limb. So why we say that this is a human being? So if you think about it a little further, we have to go so to say, beyond the physical existence and understand the human soul, the human life element. Now from the perspective of his life, but the but the, but what is the spirit, the spirit of the human the human spirit is that yes indeed he it should be he is able to reach out in each in any one of these areas that his limbs allow him to. And from here we go a little deeper and we say, look, yes, he's able to walk. But you know what's behind walking? Behind walking is that he can go from one from this place to this place. Now, if going from this place to this place is something which is aroused circumstantially, he can't be here anymore, he has to move here. So then at that time we should get late or uh, fix. We don't say that. He has feet at birth. And God forbid if something is not right, we say it's a, a, a terrible, terrible tragedy. Why? Who says he has to move from here to, the, to here? Maybe he'll never have to move from here to here. 
Are you with me? What's the answer? The answer is whether or not he has to move from here to here, this is only, this is the chitzonius of it. In essence, a person perceives his domain, the entire world. Whether he ever has to move around the world or not, that depends on the shlichus that he has in the world. But the whole world, that is his domain. This is why we said many times that when all the Mauritian came to the world, he then lifted the entire world to a new level, to a new level of reality. The whole world, not only the place where he was sitting. The whole world acquired a significance because all the Mauritian, all the human being is there. We illustrate this all the time by the following phenomenon. Now, when a person has a home, and this is his home, these are the boundaries of his home. And then he goes and he, and he expands his home, takes one wall out and moves it 10 feet out. And then now his home is that much bigger. Does he then have to become bigger in order to occupy this other, this, uh, this additional um, area? Or is he automatically there? <coughs> Say no. Yes. He is automatically there. Why? Because a person is automatically Everywhere, everywhere, every place that he can perceive as his, he is, is automatically there. This is the human soul. This is the definition of a human being. If you go a little deeper into the nefesh, it's an etzim nefesh. You discuss many times the word etzim. Etzim means the the the, phenom- the fundamental truth of it. Etzim means that something which is not a, a conglomeration, a, a, a combination of many entities. It's one Nakuda. But this one Nakuda is an essential truth. Like we said, the sun, the muscle for that, the only best muscle we have is the sun. For those who, there too we have to project a little bit. That the sun, we always say, we have to understand that the light of the sun the light of the sun is the Oyesh and even the Bim Risha. The real light of the sun is the Oyesh and even the Bim Risha, but there was no sun. The light of the sun that is not the heat that the sun produces. That's a chitzenius. The real light of the sun is an essential light. And, and we can observe it from the perspective, from the fact that we see that the sun produces light for thousands of years without losing its fuel without losing its, its intensity. Which shows, which, which is a godly miracle to show us that yes, this is something different. There's something different. This has a reality to it. And the way Chesidus expresses it, that the sun is etzem behiri. It's an etzem that is bright. Not because it produces light, but because it is Be'etzim Behiri. And therefore, in Be'etzim Behiri, so wherever the sun comes, it becomes light. Not because it sends its rays, not because it generates um, uh, energy, but because wherever the sun is, everything becomes like the sun. Because the etzim is true throughout the entire area that he can look at. If the sun can see our earth, then automatically the earth has to be light because how can it not? The sun is here. So it etzem be here. This is etzem ha nefesh. Etzem ha nefesh means that it's nefesh be etzem. Be etzem means, let's, let's go to the next few words. Kola. Shekoyo venese be atzme kola koiches. 
that includes in various, various all the keiches. So we him to him. From here come all the keiches. From here, from this etzim come all the keiches. Why? Why does Nefesh have to have keiches for? Nefesh doesn't have keiches. It doesn't need keiches. Nefesh has keiches because it's an etzim. An etzim has no restrictions. If in order, if in order to move this cup, you have to have a hand, so the Nefesh has a hand. If in order for the sun to brighten up the earth, it has to reach to the earth, it reaches to the earth. We shall do answer. This is not the answer. It is and it has absolutely everything that 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 is true. Etzim is, is an essential truth. From this etzim hanefesh come all the koiches. What's mean koiches? Koiches is, of course, at that point where it is outside of the nefesh. This is a much lower level. And this is the 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 phenomenon of gilush of oir. Oir represents the etzim. Oir represents the etzim, which means that the oil of the etzim contains in it everything that the etzim is, but in an oil form, at the oil level. Is it to say the koiches are like oiras? No, no, koiches is, is later. The oil, from the oil hanefesh, from this come the koiches. The koiches is never that need koiches, but the nefesh has oil. Etzim has oil. We have now, now mentioned before that a person owns a home, and in his home he is standing in one location, in one place. He is not even there. He's in one location, and 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 then automatically he actually occupies the entire home. No matter how big the home is, he occupies the entire home. But he's not there. He's just in one room. How does he occupy the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole of the house? To resolve. To resolve. We said, if you want to move in to my home, and you say, look, I'm going to sit over here. I'm not disturbing anybody. You have, you, you never use this little attic for a place. I'm going to sit here. And I will scream and get you out of there. And you say, what's bothering you? Why are you so why? I'm not interfering into with your activities at all. In what way am I intruding on you? Tell me. What's the answer? You're not intruding on my functionality. But you're intruding on me. You're working on me. Because in my home, I'm present everywhere. This is that oil. Oil is represented in etzim in whatever, whatever he projects himself. This is the oil hashemesh. Oil hashemesh. The oil hashemesh will say this is the shemesh itself present. The shemesh projects project itself here, so therefore it's here. What's the lower level? Uh-huh. In the muscle, what is the lower level? Lo- lower level, lower level is where where there's a koyach. What's a koyach? Without stretching my hand to this cup. And you said or was the lower level. Or you said or was a represent. The yeah, But on a lower level. On an oil level. On an or level. Oil means a uh, gil. We spoke about this many times, but this is a very, very subtle. But yes, oil is a representative of etzim. Only an etzim has oil. Oil represents the presence of the etzim. That's a lower level. The presence. Etzim is above presence. 
Then there is the koiches. The koiches is, this is a way the derivative of the oil. Since that I am, that I am, that I am, am present everywhere that I project myself to be. Therefore, I sh- I'm, I'm able to to maneuver things everywhere. But in order to maneuver things, then that that present has to be translated in a koyach. That that in a koyach pnimi it's called. That it that it's my hand and I'm able to move the cup. But my connection to the cup is not due to the fact that I can move it. My connection to the cup is because I am there. The reason that I can move from place to place is because I am there. Because a human being occupies, is, projects himself in the entire world. This is why he is able ultimately to move. To, from this are derived the koiches. This is where the koiches are coming from. Koiches means to translate this essential truth at the lowest level, even at the level where you actually have to go and act and make it make it happen. <coughs> and it's possible that you should not be able to do it, and then it's a blemish. This is the Pshat Koiches. So, okay. So, therefore, yeah. Uh, it's, it's explained down to you that the, the, the sun is shining because the sun is acting in the heat and the sun can project it should not be the heat that's why it's shining outside of the day in the whole world the sun cannot, cannot mm. it's not possible that the sun should be there and it should not be bright because the, the Edsel can't perceive something it's not him, that's not like him. Yeah, so, so, but how does it go together? The, the Itzim has to recognize there's something outside of the Itzim. That's why there's oil, because it's outside of the Itzim. So, first we say that the Itzim is saying that everything is Itzim, but it's, it's not everything is Itzim. It's, 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 out, it's outside of the Itzim. No, no, no. Okay. The, the, the sun is an etzim only in terms of behirius. We are outside of the sun. But in terms of brightness, the sun is an etzim, etzim behirius. The sun is not an etzim. It didn't make itself. So it's not an etzim. You understand? So that's why there is outside of the sun. But but in terms of behiris, because the sun is 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 etz and behiri, so wherever wherever the sun projects itself, automatically becomes bright. Okay, and, that, and, and the same thing. Uh, let's talk about the nefesh that, that the nefesh shodan perceives that he's everywhere. His domain is everywhere, but he has to again. To the nefesh shodan is everywhere. Please understand. We have to understand that. <laughs> in a limited sense, because nef- the reason Nefesh Odom is everywhere is because the Abish put him in the world and gave the world to him. He didn't create the world. Because there's an M, M, it's an M, M is on a key, therefore he is an everywhere. The Abish said, said, said to Odom Adishim, Guru, Guru, Minus, Orch, Vechiv, Shua, and since then, Odom Adishim occupies the entire world. There is not a spot in the world that it's outside of his domain, outside of his, of his responsibility. By definition, what the neighbor should gave him his, his place in the world. <coughs> can, can be explained by the summary we defined that his etzim is etzim behind. What is the etzim neighbor showed him? That he's everywhere. Which terms? That he is everywhere is that the entire world is human. Let me just say, through whom you are to keep sure, what's meant to keep sure, capture the world. How do you capture the world? You humanize the whole world. You have to transform the whole world into a human world. What is our function?
our function is is to transform the world and bring it bring bring a human quality to it, a human and a godly quality. Yeah, but that that's what it's bringing because it's like they're saying the sun is etzem yiri. That's why he makes the world light. So what's the etzem of nefesh Adam, and that's why he makes the world. Uh, that's what I said before. As soon as Adam Rishon came to the world, the entire world acquired a new status. But what is it's his etzem of the of the nefesh Adam himself? That he, uh, he his etzem is and, and is is emes is that he that he knows only of emes and the He, he doesn't relate to the world. He, 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 he stands for the world in the world. Okay, I promise to discuss the word noise be atzmoy, and at this point, it would be it 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 it, it um, flows right in. Noise means he can bear. In the nefesh there are no koichus. If you step down a moment from the nefesh to the human being as we know him, and we always say that many things that we have experienced in there uh, that any new invention for example you know, a cell phone which was completely unheard of it's, it wasn't even exist in science fiction uh, not long ago all of a sudden everybody has a cell phone in his pocket and feels comfortable feels perfectly natural with it. because it is not beyond the human the deep human reality to be able to communicate any place across the entire world. Because even though I'm here, I know the other place also. I know how that the other place is real. I know that there are human beings over there. And we always communicate it, whether communicate it in thought, communicate it through, through, um, through uh, male or communicated by traveling, visiting one another. You we were never in different, in different reality, different world. This is with other human beings. So even though that we did not have that particular coin, but in essence, we are incorporated to the extent that when it comes, we can readily adapt to it. Nefesh noise be atme kol akoyfes. And nefesh is something about the koyfes is much deeper. And like I said, because for nefesh menohim soy, the nefesh has all the koyfes, bears all the koyfes because the nefesh actually incorporates all worldly, <laughs> all human possibilities. How? Because the nefesh is an etzem. And, and the etzem or the key that the nefesh represents in, in, in owns everything. The whole world, the whole world is representative of this emes. Therefore, there's not a place where the nefesh is not. Did I jump the gun over here a little bit? There's a Mosul Rishi. Mamchi Kolanim Tsoi. The Nefesh relates to this Mosul Rishi perfectly. As a result of that, it relates to the entire world. Because the entire world is a stand for the Mosul Rishi. What does that mean in, in, in simple human terms, if I may? Despite the fact that that 
you have all kinds of things. You have the physical thing, the inanimate object, the, the, the four different categories and all that. Everything, absolutely everything in the world represents one principal truth. And that is, it did not make itself, it was, it came to be. There's a more tradition that brought it into being. This idiocy that things made themselves is, is total idiocy. It's completely contrary to the whole psychology of the physical world. Everything in the world is asking, what am I here for? Because everything in the world makes a statement. I was brought in here. What am I here for? So to explain noise, uh, uh, this is... So that's what noise is. It, can, it, bears, it bears not because it contains it, but because of, by virtue of what it is. Noise is the atzma. Its essence represents all of these things. That's like we say a human being. What's a human being? A human being, by definition, has hands and feet. But these are the additional, you can separate them. No, that's a human being. The term human being includes all of these things. Have we seen that muscle of the human being, the, the union of nice that it bears all these? Uh, when you think of your foot, you have to go and feel the foot. Oh, here you are. Mm -hmm. But you never thought you, you, you in someplace else. How can you think you put it yourself? Pure being includes all of your coifers. And he's saying it doesn't, it does, the essence does not include all the coifers. No, it doesn't include, it's noise saying. Uh, your being doesn't include, your being, the noise saying. This means that, why, do you, why does coifers? We explained coifers means that you are able to reach out. Yeah. And in that essence, he is everywhere. That's why he says noise is not a coifers. If we should take this essence and translate it at the level where where there are multiple places, he will be able to reach them. He will create a koyak that will reach it. Mm -hmm. right. it allows for That's like you would be, created a cell phone to be able to reach them again. It's not a question. If the Rav permits, I just one comment. Uh, the BIO, he put out for breath the Hesdi Yushim, this now came out in a book. And I think it's very negative to what we're learning here. And if I'm wrong, the rough could easily tell me. He says that... You could that be wrong. What? You could not be wrong. But Edson, maybe. <laughs> okay, but Kitsa, he says... The kids he says that until... Uh, that you do you think the mile of the uh, of the Abba Minim, the Lent Chastiris, is that it brings the Edson to Pneumius. He says more than... But he said... Uh, Real explains more than that. The mile of the Abba Minim is that the Abba meaning, even though the separate entities, these separate entities still express something which is Atzmi. So it's more than just, it's more than Unity. Yachid. It's, it's a mile of Echod. Even though it's a separate thing, it still expresses something which is Etzem, which is even higher than, than just bringing down the Etzem into Pneumius. That these four separate things and separate things, but yet the an expression of something which is Atzmi. And I think it's still very you mean Atzmi or Unity? No, he says higher than unity. Unity means to have like a common core. What's the common core? El Kush. So I don't see the, the, the separate thing. Inside is El Kush. That's Rosh and Yokiba. Masha Ekin by Sukkot Revel is even higher than Yochid. Echad is higher than Yochid because these separate things as separate things can still express something which is actually as separate. To me, it's okay. So okay, yeah, okay. That's just. Nevertheless, on the expression level, we're talking about the atom. Okay. No, it's the expression of atom. You say, okay, say yeah. um, okay. So, Oineg is the atom on 
Chochma is one with Oymet. Velochein. Okay, now we continue for it. Velochein. And therefore, Koyar Haseichel. The Koyar Haseichel. Now we're talking about the Koyar Haseichel. Gam Kmoi Shebo Begilui. Even at the state where it is Begilui, it's a functioning Koyar. And we will discuss it in a moment. Moved on whom they call our It stands apart from all the koiches. And why does it stand apart from all the koiches? By Meshahu Koileil Kulo. And the fact that this koya haseicho includes all the koiches. Now here we're talking about koya haseicho. And then first we're talking about, talking about Chochmah. The translation of Chochmah in terms of coming into, into Kalim, into Koiches and Nefesh, into Koiches, is the Seichel. So Koiches and Seichel is representative of the Chochmah. Even Kmeshu Hubegilu, it is in a, in a category by itself, in the fact that it includes all the countries. The Koya has when we talk about Chochma per se, it is more or less direct for us to recognize that Chochma is, is a, of a special caliber, a special quality. Even the way we experience Chochma, Bora Gamavrik doesn't have a real presence. So we can see that this is something higher than Koichus. When we talk about Seichel, and Seichel is something, is, is a Koyach that functions on a functional level. There is a logic to it. And because of this phenomenon, that Seichel can come down all the way to the physical level, it is, it is difficult to identify what do we mean by Seichel. And in what way is Seichel different than all the Koichas? And the, the, the simple illustration, simple illustration of this, of this um, um, perplexity, of this confusion, is in a simple physical sense, one and one. It always demonstrated and now it will really help us to understand what we're talking about. One on one, physically speaking, one on one remains one on one. The fact that you have two doesn't change anything. There's no sacral element in this concept. You have to identify that you have two ones. You have two, two ones, you have a million ones. There is, it doesn't, it doesn't, there's no seichel element in this. Like a point, I told you the story with the dog, it was able uh, to count one, two, three. They didn't, they didn't correlate that this is three, this is not one, no difference. Three ones. Seichel is is a, a true oil hanefesh. It's an oil hanefesh. What is oil hanefesh? Oil hanefesh means that it brings a sense of unity, sense of reality. So we have two, you have one and one, two ones. These two ones are not just two ones, they are two. 
What, what does it mean there too? Here is what, please understand. Mm -hmm. If you say two once, that means that each one of these two exists independently of the other. The world perceived from, the, from, from this stupid perception is that each thing made itself, there is no such thing as two. It's two at once, everything made itself. There's no correlation. Comes the Seichel and says, this is, whole, this is, this is a complete mis misconception, misunderstanding of what you're looking at. If there is one, it is because, because there's a source that allowed this one to be. If there is two, it's because there is a source that allows a two to be. And therefore, it's a much greater revelation than that source. It's two. And hence, we have the, the principle of a Mizumar, a Minion. A Minion is a completely different entity. Because it reveals the, the, the source in a much greater greater sense. We can understand this principle on a simple physical level. In our physical world, everything in order for it to be has to have a place to be. Right? The world is monomorphic. It has to have a place to be. So if there is one thing, that means that there's enough space in the world for this one thing. If you have two things, that means the world now provides for two things. It's much greater space. Then you say, oh, it can, there could be a million. Oh, wow. It can provide for a million. Then when you go and project it further, say, really, there is no limit to what you can provide. Mm. There's a limit that one thing, can, two things cannot be in the same space. This thing that they're not in the same space is only in the limited space. But if you if you don't have the location, they're all exactly the same space. It's the unlimited space that provides for each one of them. For all of them. Limited being the same space means, means like this. If, if this thing is here, then somebody else cannot be here. That means that I've occupied the space and, and there's a limit to how much how much can allow. You can allow only one thing in the place. But in reality, if you have this thing, has this thing now reduced the number of things you can have in the world? So it, didn't, it doesn't really occupy the space. It didn't reduce anything. This does it ever since. Infinity, in our sense, in our, in our world, space is the basis of the world, the infinity of the world. So, does ever sense that a finite entity, no matter how great, is composed of finite, uh, finite units. But infinity, one and a million, are identical. So it's the same space that provides for this one, and for this one, and, 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 and for as many as you can produce. This is even, so to speak, in, in, our, in our world. In our personal experience, since we are living in demarcated area, therefore there, there is a limit. Because we have to live in demarcated area, because we have we demarcate, we take, make, make walls to demarcate a certain area because this is our perception where we live. But the existence of the world has no limit. 
Seichel is, bring, is including all the Koyach is because Seichel is bringing the source, not Seichel, right. Seichel, what is the basis of Seichel? Oh. This is an important point. So I have a couple of minutes. I want to explain to you. That's what we spoke about now. There is two parts in Seichel. And we have this in our experience. We are arguing a certain point. And we bring in riots, proof. No, it should be like this, it should be like this. It cannot be like this. So all of these arguments is really on the chitzoniness of the Seichel. There has to be this way because this is like this, therefore this is like this. This is like logical, logical processes. Then once we come to the conclusion, we make the point and say, we say, this is how it is. When we come to a point and say, this is how it is, we, we don't refer to the logic that brought us to the conclusion. Then we realize and then, aha, oh, now I see what you mean. Now I see what you mean is a completely different, um, a, a different resource, a completely different um, um, sense of reality than that than the logical element. That's huh? That's pneumius. That's that's seichel. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's that's much more pneumius than nefesh. Like one and one, two ones. You don't need seichel even. This is a physical fact. The whole world is preoccupied with this thing and to figure out how many ones you will have if you if you have all kinds of different combinations of mathematical relations. How many ones are you going to have? So they're not involved in seichel at all. And that's why they are completely not aware that there's such thing as seichel. And that's why they lost sense of what is different between a human being and, a, and an ape. Because ape also can have two ones. But by us, the whole point of all understanding is to understand that the two ones are not two ones, but they are two. And the principle that they are two is a statement that the reason there are these two ones is because there is a higher reality that provides for two for these two ones. They don't make their place for themselves, the place was made for them. This is why there are two ones. And this is why, this is where the Satan comes in. In other words, once you understand all the logic, you come to the conclusion, then you see it top down, then you see it from a truth perspective, rather than from the, from the proven perspective. I'll give you an illustration. <coughs> the original concept, concept of a car. What initiated, what inspired a car? As we said before, finding a car is, is the human perception that he should be able to get around. Originally, they never, it wasn't intended you should get around, you know, thousands of miles away, just to be able to get around as far as the horse and buggy could take you, to replace the horse and buggy. You know that the, the original trains were called the horseless carriage, the cars were called the horseless carriage. You heard that expression, the horseless carriage? When were you born? <laughs> The horseless carriage, the only thing that can really move is the horse. And now we have a carriage that's a horseless carriage. And that was the, the idea, okay? But then, and how was it built? And all kinds of, um, of gimmicks, there were, first there was a steam engine, whatever it is. 
all kinds of complexities ultimately to cause the wheels to turn and the wheels will then grab the, gu- the ground and then and will cause it to move. Now, finally, 100, 150 years later, we have a complicated uh, machine. A co- and we have, we have uh, an engine that is, that is uh, super complex and also super useful. And then it was housed in a, in a body, you know, put together in a very, in a very uh, concise manner, so that you don't even hardly know that it's there. It's hidden behind the hood, and all you do have to do is get in the car and, and push the button and the car moves. How many of us are aware there is an engine under the hood? Whoever saw an engine, who is it? Am I driving an engine? I'm driving a car that, that, that serves me. I'm aware of the seats in the car. In other words, what am I aware of? Of the conclusion of its function, of its end concept. not involved in all that makes it happen. That which, uh, which, which I'm aware of, which all of us are aware of, that the car can sit down and move, this is the essence of the car. This is the real essence of the car. This is what gives life to the, to the entire complexity. That is a purely human concept. Why is it a human concept? Where is the human element in this? Please understand that we mention all the time. A human being is a royal presence in the world. By nature. Why is he a royal presence? Because he's really above the world. I could say the animal is a living body, a human being is life in a body. He's principally life. He's principally godly. And any function that he needs in the physical world has to be in perfect comfort and in perfect utility. Therefore, they see that he's sitting, he should be comfortable. But feeling the human being, not the feeling the, the car. Somebody sells you a car, perfect engine, and he puts a, a, a brick on the seat. What are you selling me? Well, the car is moving. That's not a car. It's not accommodating the human being. It's not a car. This is Seiko. This is safe. Like I point out all the time, when they go and they build these super engines that can go 200 miles per hour, and their functionality is exclusively to go in circles, it's lost completely its, its significance. This is what, <coughs> what the human being is capable of reducing the human being to an animal. Instead of uplifting the human being to the human being. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The whole concept is a safer concept. Movement from place to place is a safer concept. It's not the result of, of, of the engine. Going in circles is a result of a good engine. Which one can go faster?
Seichel is moved on the call. Koifa is Masha who Koila Kula. Well, in this, in oh, this. Masha who Koila Kula means that all the Koichas, like a car engine. That's like the Koichas, the engine. That's like, whatever it is. Walking, talking, or something. Is this, it's the Sichli in them that makes them Koichas. This is why he's superior to oil. The Seichel brings, brings oil and nefesh to everything. Okay, overstep, overstayed my welcome. So have a good day, and we will continue again. I thought we will come to a conclusion, but the conclusion leads to another to another step. So I miss him tomorrow again. Have a good day, and a good year to everyone. Today is called in Gottes Nomen. You know that? Gottes Nomen. Right. In the name of Hashem. Right. Is it these four days? These four days is representing Yud Kevod Kev. Right. Uh, the remiss, the what should we take from today? What should we take from today? That we're knowing that today is, is good. What should we take? From? What should we take from, from this knowledge and, and deliver? Knowing that today is good, you give up. But you represent Chachma. We just learn uh, Chachma. Have a good day.